laundry. We all hate it. It's a chore of life that you just can't get away. But what if I tell you there really is an easier way to fold things so that you get more storage and it's easier to get access to. Let's get started. One of the things that I've gotten to do while organizing is really come up with some creative ways to fold things so that my clients get double the storage out of their existing storage units, whether it's drawers, containers, shelves. I have done a lot of research and a lot of playing around, and I want to share some of the simplest ways to fold with you. Before we get into it though, I want to say that no matter what I suggest, there is no one size fits all when it comes to folding. I've had clients that do not like folding at all. They're like, Noreen, please don't make us put fancy folds on the shelves. And to them, I say, that's great. Let's come up with a solution that works for you. And if you've ever watched my videos before, you know, I'm always suggesting Find a system and a storage solution that works best for you and your lifestyle. I personally don't fold a lot of my clothes. I know, don't tell anybody. But when it comes to things like my underwear, my workout clothes, my pajamas, they just get thrown in a bin. I don't care. I don't have a lot of them. For me, it's just fast to throw them in the bin and when I need one, I can pull out what I want. Now. The areas that I need more storage in, however, like where my work uniforms are or where my shirts are, I need more space. So if I just throw them in, I'm not going to have enough space for everything. So for those, I fold. But find a system that works best for you. So let's talk about some of the ways I fold things. I usually decide my fold based on the size it's going into. So for example, if I've got bins like this that are going into a drawer or going onto a shelf, when I'm choosing the size of things, if I have a lot that's going into a bin, I'm going to make sure that I'm sizing for half of the storage bin. And you guys, you do not have to buy these. These are definitely something that you can DIY out of a box, a cardboard box. Make sure it's clean, odor free. You can cover these with contact paper, wrapping paper. You can decoupage them. You can paint them. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these. But I do think that having containers for your things on shelves or in drawers help just because it corrals the same items together. If all of your shirts are going in one big drawer or one big shelf, this isn't as important. But if you're trying to subdivide, containers like this really make it easier. If I've got a bin like this and I only have maybe a dozen of these shirts, then having them sized the width of this is fine because then I can file through. I know this doesn't make sense yet, but go with me. The first thing I recommend is laying it out on a flat surface, whether it's the top of your washer, your dryer, your couch, your coffee table, any flat surface. I used to use my bed a lot. It gives you the ability to make sure there's no creases and it also gives you the ability to lay the container next to it so that you're making sure it's sized right. I'm going to be doing just a single row of all of my examples and I stand my clothes up after I file them so that they're easy to see everything and they're easy to have access to. That is the game changer for me when it comes to folding is having things upright. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the shirt the same width as the container. So as you can see, I've got space on both sides. This is going to fit right inside. I always start with the top first to get that down so that I have a clean edge. I'll bring the bottom up to wherever that met. And now I'm just going to fold it in half one more time. And I have something that's just going to stand up right inside of that container. So now when I look inside this bin, I can see that this is my striped tank top. These will all be tank tops in a real setting. For today's example, I'm going to be using multiple shirts in here so that you can see them standing up. But it stands by itself. This 
is my favorite way. I am never worried about the shirts being super finely folded. I know some people really love that aesthetic of a crisp, exact sized fold. And if you like that aesthetic, I'm gonna show you a tool at the end of this video that you can use. I never take my folding that serious. I just like the ability to see them all and have them folded uniformly so that they fit inside well. So that is a tank top. Next, we're going to go with a short sleeve shirt. I always go with the front side down. And I just, again, to keep wrinkles away, I just kind of smooth it out. But I'm going to fold it in. And you can be as specific as you want with your sleeves. I don't usually care, but don't tell anybody. And again, I'm just going so that it fits within this container. I'm not such a big stickler on the uniform look, but again, make sure you're doing this in a way that fits for you. So I'm going to bring that top down again, the bottom up to meet it, and then I'm just going to fold it again. This technique usually makes sure that it's right at the same height as the container. If you have a shirt that is much longer, you could fold the end over towards the top and then fold it. So this doesn't need to be an exact science. It's going to be varied from shirt to shirt, but now it will just go right inside with the other one. So you can see immediately which shirt is which shirt and you can just pull that out. I know some people dislike this because when you pull one, another usually pulls out with it. I find that that only happens if you have too many shirts in a space, meaning that it's become compacted and tight. And if that happens, sometimes I end up getting a few too many shirts and that's my indicator, it's time to purge. But when that happens, I'll just kind of put my fingers in and spread out the space around it so that I can still pull out that single shirt. And it makes it just as easy when it's time to put it away. I'll stick my hand in and much like papers in a file folder, I'll just pull it back a little to create space and file that shirt right back in where it belongs. The next shirt I'm gonna show is a long sleeve shirt and you're going to start to see a pattern here. So I'm going front side down, spreading it out. And I really do this quick, you guys. I am not a meticulous folder. I just wanna get it put away. So I'm gonna pull the two sides over and I'm basically just creating a the shape of a square. That one didn't turn out well, so I'm gonna redo it. And again, when I'm working for a client, I'm just making sure that it's sized to fit in the container or the space that I want. Shoulders down, bottom meets it, and I fold it in half again. This is the quickest method to get things in. And again, you can see that they just stand up. Now let's go for one of those bulky things. I have my Crafty Organizer sweatshirt, which I got bleach on. I'm so angry I did that, but you know, life happens. So because this is a larger item, getting it inside of this is going to be just a little bit trickier. So what I do is get rid of the bulky part first, which is the hood. And I'm truly spending more time on this with you than I normally do. So I can see where the edge of the box is and it lines up right around the same space as the hood. So I'm just going to start wrapping around that space, get those sleeves out of the way. Now that I know it's the same width, I could start folding that top down. And then this one's going to be bulkier. But do you see this creates the bottom so that it can stand up? And this allows me to see what the shirt is so that I can just fit it right inside. Now, the reason I like doing it this way again, if this was in a traditional drawer and this drawer was sliding in and out of a container and I was stacking them, do you see the height difference? Most of the time with a drawer, you would end up having to have a secondary row here just to get it into the same space which means you're losing a lot of storage. But additionally, to get to that bottom shirt, you have to remove this, or when you pull it, everything becomes unfolded and messy. That's one of the main reasons I really like this technique. 
and I've still got more room in here for other things. So this is by far my favorite. Now, if you do not want to have a single row, you guys, this is where you can really play around with the folding techniques. So if you wanted them to be two rows, you could simply change the width of this, top again, bottom up, over, and now I can make two rows almost the same way. There is not going to be a hard, fast rule with these, which is, I think, probably why I love this technique so much, is you can play with it to make it fit your space and your needs. So I'm just gonna bring the down, top, So if I had this shirt that I wanted to go in another little row, every time I'm gonna get rid of those the top straps that just kind of makes it messier. So now you can see I would have, let's get this sweatshirt, that'll be the true teller. Yzma's chiming in. So for this, I'm trying to go for the same width as here. I'm probably going to fold over Fold over again because I need a skinny footprint on this one. Top first. This one's going to be bulky. Yeah, that one's super bulky. But I've got two rows and still have room for other things. So this is a quick example of using something in a storage bin and using the guidelines of the shape of the container to dictate how you fold your items. But this will work in a drawer or on a shelf or in an under bed storage capacity. So these are some of my favorite things for shirts. So let's do the pants. I usually like to do the front part closed in against itself, but if you wanna see the front of your pants, certainly do it the way you like. I've had some clients that want to see the printing on the front. I've had other clients who wanna see the pockets. That's how they can decipher which pant is which. I will usually tuck in the little part that sticks out because I'm trying to keep them as uniform and size as possible. I'll bring it all the way up to right about the top of the pocket. That way I have this extra portion that I can bring over. And then as you guessed it, I'm just gonna fold it over that one last time. What that does is it creates a wider space on the bottom so that they stand. This really is the magical part of this technique is getting them to stand pretty much on their own because that is what allows things to be easy to pull out. Now, flimsy shirts are gonna be trickier that's when you have to rely on the shirts around it to stand it up. But trying this technique, you're really gonna find that you get so much more in your drawers and you don't lose things because they're not buried under other items. Now, shorts are just about the easiest ones in the world. I do the same thing. I fold the fronts to themselves. And for shorts, usually because they're not very big, I just fold them in half. But sometimes if I am trying to get it into a smaller space, I'll still do the thirds. This one's a little bit more difficult to have standing simply because there isn't a lot of space, but as you could see, it worked pretty well. And now I can just fit that inside my little file system. So I have a long sleeve shirt, a short sleeve shirt, a tank top, a sweatshirt, a pair of pants, and a pair of shorts all in this little 11 by 11 inch cube. That's a lot in one little space. So I'm hoping that you saw some techniques in here that you liked. The last technique I'm going to show is one for people who genuinely just hate folding. And for that one, I recommend just folding it in half, make it quick and simple, get whatever sleeve as that is in the way out and start rolling from the top down. This is sometimes called a military roll, but just roll it all the way up, trying to get the creases out as you go along, and then you can stand it up inside of your container. Now, again, if you want to size it appropriately so it doesn't extend out the top, then you might want to fold it into quarters first, in which case we would do something like this one more time, and then again from the top down. The reason I like starting from the top is so that the wrinkles are less at the bottom because that's where the area is going to show. Rolling is one of my favorite techniques, especially when traveling, because you can really get a lot in that way. As you can see, I still have 
the tank top, short sleeve, long sleeve. I added pajamas. I have my jeans. I have that sweatshirt and I still have a little bit of room if I wanted to add a pair of shoes or a toiletries bag. And this technique has the least amount of wrinkling and you can still see everything. So if you like the rolling technique better, it is just as easy to roll things in and put them away but choose a method that works for you. Now, for those of you who want that pristine, crisp, uniform look, the folding boards are one of the best things out there. You can buy them inexpensively on Amazon or Bed Bath & Beyond, but you can also make one very easily. I found a tutorial video that someone had already done. Check out the link in the description below. I don't want to redo it because somebody's already done such a fabulous job, but this can easily be done out of cardboard that you're discarding or from foam core if that's accessible to you in your area. So do check that out as an option if you just want to do the quick flip folding and have them the exact same size every time. Let me know which of these techniques you like or maybe one that you're already using or perhaps you've come up with something completely different. Again, my favorite technique, especially for my pajamas, is once I've done my laundry, I just throw it in. But I'd love to know what you do. Thank you so much for watching today. I can't wait to hear which of these techniques you liked or which ones you have as a recommendation. Thank you as always to my patrons who allow me to make these videos. Thank you to you for checking in with me today and for leaving those comments, hitting that like button, and if you haven't already, hitting that subscribe button. I will see you guys in just a few days where I'm going to be talking about negative talk. You know those voices that pop into our heads sometimes and make us feel less than amazing, which we all are. We're going to be talking about that and ways to combat it. So do make sure you hit that subscribe button. I will see you in just a few days. Bye.